Hi. <clears throat> My name is Kelly Item, and I'm an author and an inventor. In this video, I want to start off with some practical ways that you can make your toilet paper last longer without shredding them or, you know, pulling them apart. You know what I'm saying? And it's real simple, and I have so much more to share with you that, that you're really, really going to love. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to be outside the box, outside your... Your, you know your experience, but I, I hope that I can persuade you that something really unusual and, and wonderful going on here. Uh, the first thing <coughs> uh, about using toilet paper is that at least this happens to me, and maybe this isn't your experience, but so often I will go to the bathroom and I will wipe myself and then I'll flush the toilet. And the, the swirling of the water says, oh, wait a minute, there's more here to go. And so then I have to go through the process twice. And we don't think about that in the past because, you know, you, know if you, you just use the toilet paper. But these days, obviously, toilet paper is at a premium, right? So what we have to learn to do is to flush the toilet before we clean ourselves. Because, and then wait about, oh, half a minute and see if, in fact, there isn't more to go. Now, the second thing you can do that's very helpful, and I, and I learned this the hard way because I actually gave myself a hernia. And it, it was, <laughs> I hardly strained at all. I mean, I sat down to go to the bathroom, and I, I put a little pressure, and boom, it was a hernia. I guess it's because I was older, and, you know, my body wasn't, wasn't getting the exercise it needed. And, gave myself an actual hernia. This can happen particularly as you get older, I, I would imagine. So what you want to do instead, that I learned you know, from that, from that dramatic uh, experience, because I needed to have surgery afterwards, is to, uh, rather than push, breathe. Just relax and take a deep breath in. It might take a series of breaths. In my own case, I've had a broken back, and so that part of my body doesn't work as well as for other people, even though I can walk a little bit. Um, it just doesn't work very well. So for, in my case, I might have to take five or ten steady breaths to go. You might find it only takes a couple. You know, whatever it takes. But just, you know, t just pay attention and notice if that assists you in in starting some movement you and you know you know you know your body you can feel it is something moving if there's something starting to move then keep the deep breath uh, don't go too overboard you don't want to get dizzy obviously right but just you know so if you start to feel a little bit of that yeah you know, faintness or whatever it is just take it easy you know and then maybe start and stop again so this is how we can you know save you know, our toilet paper so it will last a lot longer so that so that we only have to do one wiping series rather than having to do a bunch, you know, and using up twice as much toilet paper. Because that's at a premium. It really is at a premium, so we gotta do these things and it's actually healthier. You know, flush the toilet, go again, and then take the breaths, and that's really a lot healthier to avoid the possibility of even in, in an extreme case, uh, a hernia, and again, I, I, I hardly strained at all. I didn't. I was like, you know, whatever, and boom, pop. So, <laughs> what can I say? Anyway, but I've got something even more fantastic for you. I want you to know that, <clears throat> you know, we're talking about coronavirus and, and all that stuff, and 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 we're like freaking out and all that. Well, I hug people who have the flu, and that sounds really wild and crazy, and I'm going to show you something in a moment to show you that I don't get the flu regardless of doing the thing, violating all the rules that were well-meaningly taught to us for a hundred years, you know, five generations, uh, you know, and, and it gets solidified in there because, you know, it wouldn't last that long if it wasn't good advice, right? And that's usually the case. Now, things that are passed from generation to generation are really good advice, but not always. So here's the thing. 
I can touch my face in dramatic fashion. I've been making videos about this for over three weeks. I've done about, oh, I don't know, a dozen of them, touching my face. I've actually shot the videos 50 times because I don't know how to do editing. And I touch my face over and over again, and I don't get the flu. And I'm going to show it to you here in a dramatic fashion because I'm actually going to lick my fingers and do some stuff. And I don't mean to, you know, offend you with sensitivity, but it's for your benefit so that you can see that these things aren't true. That we've that we've been led to believe hugging actually increases the immunity of the person you hug, and yourself. Kissing does the same thing. Family member, you go ahead and you can give them a kiss. If it, you know, your wife, your husband, give them a kiss. It increases that so you get less chance of getting the flu. Laughing increases your immunity. So I'm not going to go into the details about it, but just it does. So here's the deal. Watch me, I'm going to lick my fingers and then I'm going to touch my nose, my eyes, and my ears. I really am. I'm going to touch my hat. Look at this. This is probably full of viruses. Touch the keyboard. Let's get a little extra scoop here, right? All of that, right? Now watch. Lick my fingers, touching my nose, touching my eyes, my ears. I don't get the flu. It's just not true. There's another reason for it, and I'll briefly give it to you, and it is that the, the needle that's on a virus is negatively charged, and the way that it, it, it pokes a hole in our cell wall. So let's imagine this is a cell wall. Well, on the other side of the cell wall, on this side, is a phalanx of phalanx, or however that word is pronounced, of negative charges. So if this needle tries to go in there, but it's got negative charges on it, it is repelled. And we have 75 trillion cells. We breathe in 1,200 viruses an hour. And all those viruses that are in there every, every hour are repelled by the 75, 50 to 75 trillion cells in our body. So we can touch and touch and touch, swallow, go in the nose, go in the eyes. See, I'm doing it again. And I, I've done this 50 times in the last three plus weeks. I'm healthy. They, it's this thing. This is the requirement. You see, in order to build a fire, we need three elements. We need a combustible material, we need oxygen, and we need heat. Well, in the case of a virus, the one thing that needs to happen is that the virus needs to be able to penetrate your cell wall. And it cannot do it if it's negatively charged on the inside. Right? That's what we learned that first week of chemistry in high school. We, it's always repelled. That's why your whole life, if you're 20, 40, 50, 80, your whole life you've been doing that hour by hour, 1,200 viruses. It works, it works, it works, right? But sometimes that, that, that uh, membrane potential goes down. And, oh, I got something popping up on my screen here. I got to make sure I do this because... Now, actually, I watch the screen a lot. I should be watching, looking at you. Um, but anyway, so so what's happened? Why is it that lately the flu's like going crazy and everybody's getting sick and we're getting terrified and we're running out of toilet paper and we're, you know, the whole nine yards and, and the shelves are get, becoming barren. We could have famine, you know, because people aren't going to be getting paid, all that stuff. Well, I've got the solution. And I just showed you I am invulnerable to the flu. How do I do it? Well, I protect myself from the cell towers and the smart meters and the Wi-Fi and the, and the uh, wireless phones and all that other stuff that's out there, the microwave ovens. All that stuff is putting out stuff that's lowering my membrane potential. It allows the viruses to get in. That's why Wuhan's having this problem because they were China's showcase city for 5G Started October 31st. I predicted it two years ago that this would happen. And sure enough, it's happening. And Milan is the number one city for 5G in Europe. Qualm and, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, you know, Qualm, Q-O-M, Tehran. They have quite a bit of 5G, very much localized in that city. It's nailing people, South Korea. The ships are metal containers, and they've got wireless to the up the kazoo 
and, and that stuff is bouncing off the walls, it's lowering the membrane potential of the passengers and the people in those cities. So I use this that I'm going to show you just now. I'm going to let you experience it. And so and what you'll probably notice, you're not going to notice when your immune system goes up, but you might notice that you feel relaxed. And you're going to know, and what's happening is the peptides in your brain are making the right, they're matching up with the frequencies that are coming in. And this thing is actually neutralizing the 5G and the 4G and the wireless and all that stuff. You don't need to know all that, but that's what's working for me, is I've shown you and shown you and shown you. And so, you know, this is outside the box, but it's true. You can see, I've got video after video, you can see me doing this over and over again to prove to you that what I'm talking about is, in fact, accurate. And what's great news is that this is going to, you know, we can start to panic in an hour. We can start to panic in a day if you share this with people because it's going to get into the right hands and it's going to stop it because then I'm going to have enough money to have enough of these machines so that, you know, everybody can have them. In the meantime, you can go to my Patreon site and have it instantly delivered to you. You don't even have to watch the screen. It's like music. It's like you got music playing in the other room. You can hear it. The vibrations, the frequencies do the job. They do. It's all frequencies that's going through with music. This isn't musical, but it has the same kind of fractal waves that are like music that your, that your cells love. So here we go. Without further ado, let me turn this baby on. I'm going to put it on medium because if I put it on high, you get too much distraction of the wind blowing into the microphone. So I'm going to uh, hold this back here, and I'm going to put this on... Uh, Although oscillate works better, I'm going to put this on uh, not oscillate. What is this vibration? I don't know why it's vibrating all of a sudden. But anyway, I hope you're not hearing that. I hear it now. It's like, why? Uh, this video has gone on for a while. I don't know how to edit it. So I'm just going to hold it way back. So hopefully you don't hear that noise. Um, maybe I'll just put it out low because you'll still get it to a certain degree. I'm going to have to check into that. Anyway, there we go. It's quieted down. So, this is, and I'm not going to describe how this works. It takes way too long. Way too long, and we don't have time for that right now. Ain't nobody got time for that. So what I'd like you to notice, you might want to take a nice deep breath in and relax. And notice if you're starting to feel that. And I'll move it back and forth a little bit to give that oscillating motion a little bit. And if you notice something, even though it's a very short time, uh, I, I just tell you, this is what I use. When we're relaxed, our immune system goes up. Hugging works. Kissing works. Uh, laughter works. And I'm finding this is working for me like nothing else. And we can stop the panic. And that's very important because the panic can kill a lot more people than the virus. We've only had about, and the number keeps going up, it's like 60, 70, 80 people. The, the regular flu has been killing between two and 5,000 people a week. We didn't panic about that. So this panic is unnecessary. All of a sudden, we're avoiding each other. We're saying, "Oh, well, that flu is going faster, faster." Well, it's because it's it's because it's combined with 5G that's doing it to people. The other flu is doing the same thing. And it's already at a faster rate. And, and the CDC is playing with the numbers. They've said 2,000 people increase in deaths every week for five weeks straight. That's a lot of BS. It's at least 2,000. They don't want. They don't want to tell us what it really is, because you don't get five weeks in a row at 2,000 each and every week. It's BS numbers. It's the government trying to not scare you, because you see what happens when you get scared. All the shelves get empty. But I'm going to be quiet here for a minute. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can give you a minute of quiet time um, so you can really enjoy this, because 
you know, I'm distracting you. It's important that you be able to relax. Have I made my point? Are you feeling relaxed? It's been about a minute and 20 seconds, so I'm going to say goodbye. And I hope that you share this because if we can get this information to the right people, we can nip this in the bud so that maybe your job is being jeopardized. Maybe your access to food is being jeopardized. I personally am unable to visit someone in a nursing home who is going to be 99 next month. She likes having company. And her being not having visitors, I'm just hoping that everything will be all right. So there's a lot at stake here. You need to share this. <clears throat> Go to my Patreon site. You can have this 24 hours a day. You don't have to watch the video. You don't want to sit through 13 minutes of video to get, you know, to get this. And by supporting me, it enables me to get more of these heartfelt energizers quickly out there. I'm living on Social Security. This is a recent invention. I really need your help. I can help you if you help me. And it not only will it help you, it will help your whole family, it will help your community, help your relatives, everyone involved. Please, please, please share this. Please, please, please support what I'm doing. And this will be the greatest news ever because this will mean that we have finally determined the key to preventing all viruses. Flus are major killers every year. A couple of years ago, 80,000 people died from the flu. I think traffic accidents might have been, I'm guessing, about 40,000, you know? So it's a huge number of people. And, but by knowing this and by doing this, it opens up a wide horizon of benefit where people don't have to have the flu. And maybe the flu doesn't kill you and you've had it a few times in the past. You know, it might feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna die, you know. But maybe you'll never have to have the flu again. I don't get the flu. I help people with the flu. And you just saw all the things that I do that you would think would give me the flu. And I just don't get it. So you take care. God bless. And thank you for watching.